Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Alexis, and welcome to Ask a Trans Woman. So thankful that we've made it this far, and just thank you for keep sending in your questions, whether it's in the comment section below, so for next week, put that in this week's video, or on Twitter. I always take them on Twitter as well. So you can find them, again, in the comments below, or on Twitter. Lindsay, what do we got this week? All right, here we go. What advice would you give those of us who are still questioning their gender? Okay. This is the heavy one. I knew this was coming because uh, it was left in the comments of an older episode, I believe episode two, uh, just after we'd already filmed episode three. So I wanted to make sure it was addressed. First of all, thank you for the question because it's such an important question. And I did give a quick reply of basically, you know, coming out is not a race. And while I still stand by that, you know, let's add some nuance. So if you are questioning your gender, I'm going to lead off with the thing that my therapist has told me several times. Uh, every time I've started to wonder like, well, am I really trans? Cis people don't ask themselves these questions. They just don't. And I've, you know, helped counsel a friend through this recently. They are still struggling with their I gender identity. Uh, you know, they feel like they've found a nice place at the moment through our conversations, what they've told me. But, you know, it's a process. And some people know from a very young age that they're trans. They know that their body doesn't fit the vision of who they are in their head. And that's perfectly fine. I was a late bloomer. I didn't really start to understand the feelings that I was having, this kind of, just kind of general yeah, feeling is the best way I can describe it. It's really hard to put into words. Um, another thing that, uh, a, a description I was ta kind of taught by my therapist, um, just the way another one of her patients had described it to her, was it was like being forced to wear a Halloween costume that not only you did not want to wear, but was really uncomfortable and itchy, and you had to wear it all the time. That's, that's what being trans but closeted felt like to me. So you have to just kind of explore, because everyone's gender is kind of custom in, a, in that sense of what is trans for me may not be trans for you. Different people define trans differently because ultimately what trans means is not cisgender. So everything falls under the general trans umbrella, as it were, which is why you have trans, but then you have binary trans so you're either a you know trans man or a trans woman and then over here you have an entirely separate you know gender umbrella as it were that's technically trans but is non-binary or completely agender there that doesn't fall under the binary trans umbrella so it's like one big umbrella and then smaller umbrellas that all kind of just funnel down into you whatever you define as your gender. So the best advice I can give is twofold. One, take your time. You do not need to rush this and almost certainly your gender will evolve over time. I started off as needing to be super high femme. Most days now I am, I border on a non-binary presentation of I'm dressing femme, but I don't shave. Mostly cause I'm lazy. I like to sleep. Also because I work in a very open, comfortable environment where everyone knows I'm trans, nobody cares. Nobody cares if they see a little bit of stubble because they know ultimately it, it's not an issue. But moving past that, not only will your gender evolve over time, if you're not comfortable doing this on your own, which is perfectly fine, either Find a community of people 
online or in person, but that can be a little eh for people and it can be scary. You might fall in with the wrong group that isn't really the best type, type of group for this sort of exploration. If you can afford it, I highly recommend finding a therapist. Now, last week I did talk about Spectrum Health. They are my healthcare provider. My therapist works for Spectrum Health. My therapist, as well as all the therapists that work with Spectrum, do virtual consultations. You can do all of your appointments completely over what's effectively a Zoom call, uh, only more secure, all of that. You don't have to be in the same state or I think possibly the same country. I'm not 100% sure on that. I think it depends on where you're from. So check out Spectrum Health. Uh, I have a link in the description below for more information with, about them. So check that out. But again, take your time and don't go it alone. If you could spend a day with anyone, past or present, who would it be? Ooh, anyone, spending a day with anyone, past or present, who would it be? This is a bit of a, God, this is such a loaded question because there's so many, like, easy answers. Like, I'm sure a lot of people, when they answer this question, they say Jesus. But for me, like, if I was go if I was going to pick Jesus, it would be, like, the real person, not the theoretical one that everybody has in their heads. Just because he seems like a pretty chill dude, I think he'd actually be really down with trans people. You know, and it's like, I. part of me really wants to say my grandmother, the one that's passed. Because she never knew me as Alexis. Um, she died when I was still in high school. But I've been told by relatives that she used to say that I would make a very pretty girl. That if I had been born a girl, I would have been just so pretty. And I think about that often. And so I th I'd, I'd have to say her because I'd just love to spend a day with her as my full self. And for her to see the person that I've become, not the person she knew who was a scared little girl pretending to be a boy and not knowing it even at the time and was just sad all the time and lonely because she didn't know how to express herself. And so I'd, it'd be great to finally get to show that side of me to her. What great makeup tips have you learned? Okay, so what great makeup tips have I learned? I don't want to spill the beans because we were talking about doing like maybe a, a reel or a series of reels about these, but I do want to share kind of, I, I won't go all into the details. How about that? That's fair, right? One, get your foundation matched professionally, meaning go to Sephora, Ulta, basically somewhere where they, the people that are selling it to you know what the hell they're talking about. Case in point, we always go to Morphe. Uh, it's a, it, Morphe doesn't have stores all over, but they do have one here in Orlando at the Florida Mall. We have, you know, a great relationship with most of the employees at the store at this point, but especially our friend Fatima. Um, she always takes care of us and she doesn't necessarily say like, oh, you have to buy this thing. She's always asking like, oh, what are you, you know, what have you tried lately? Because she wants to know because, so she can compare it to the products they sell there. But, you know, they will help you figure out what your shade is because if you don't match your shade to like the rest of your skin, you end up with this like almost, and I hate, I hate to bring them up, but like that Donald Trump look of like orange face, white skin. It just that you run into that problem of like, there's a clear line here, you know, and it doesn't matter what your skin color is. If you use the wrong fa shade of foundation, you end up with this very defined line that goes from like where your foundation stops and where the rest of your body begins. So that that's probably the most important thing is get get professional help in picking that color because they will help match it better probably than you can. Another quick one, if possible, and I actually I can link to them the in the description. Um, if you're doing eyeliner, cheat. Use a use a stencil. They sell these like cheap sticker stencils um, for eyeliner. Basically, you just put a sticker and it like 
marks out an area for you and they have a bunch of different shapes. So that way, like you can screw up, take the sticker off and it looks like a perfect clean line. Those are amazing. Link in the description below. Uh, and last but not least, apparently the best way to keep your lipstick from transferring off is to put a really solid base on your lip. And one of the ways to do that is to use a lip liner pencil and, and completely coat it. Learned that the other day. Lindsay tested it yesterday. It works wonders. So we'll do more on that, like almost like probably a full tutorial very soon. All right, here comes another tough one. Mm -hmm. How did you know you were trans? <sighs> How did I know I was trans? Um, so beyond questioning your gender, how did you come upon being trans? So the way I knew that I was trans, and actually this, this does kind of lead to my initial attempts at transition. When I first came out, it was, and I'll do a, a this topic deserves its own video, to be honest. I came out literally the night of the 2016 ele election, I decided I just had enough and I declared myself as non-binary. That was in a lot of ways, a kind of a cop out to, I did, I was using non-binary as a coping mechanism because I wasn't ready to admit to myself that I was trans, but I was feeling it. Um, I felt more at home presenting female and it was just a thing that like, once I had done it a few times, it was like, oh no, this feels right. But when I really knew that I was trans and not even necessarily non-binary, but not like that I was just into cross-dressing or something, I was having a conversation with Lindsay, my wife, um, who you've been hearing off camera. We were talking about a name for my feminine side because I was had been talking to her about maybe expressing myself more non-binary wise and I asked her for suggestions because the names that I had previously used just never felt right they didn't stick with me I I liked them but they were more of like I don't know they were just bad choices you know, they were very more in the moment kind of decisions. Whereas I wanted, I said, if this is going to be my life, I want to make the right call. And so I asked my wife, what would, what do you suggest? If you were going to name me, what would you suggest? And a few minutes, we were texting at the time. So in a few, few minutes had gone by. Her first suggestion was Alexis. And I read it. And as soon as I read it, I kind of said it in kind of not out loud, but like out loud in my head, if that makes sense. And I felt it in my soul. Just right here. Like it, like that was me. And that's when I knew that this was not just a sometimes thing. This was not just a fluidity, bouncing back and forth. I was trans. And that meant I needed to really address it. And that's when I really started diving deeper into my therapy and coming to those conclusions with my therapist. So it was coming for me personally, it was it was the name for a lot of people. It's it's everyone is different in that aspect. Everyone has their kind of own like epiphany moment saying my name, seeing my name for the first time, that was my moment. What is your favorite form of self-care? Ooh, this is a good one. Okay, so what is your, my favorite form of self-care? So, I don't have a set favorite. Um, it really depends on the situation and what's available to me as well. Um, my favorite thing in, it, favorite place to go when I'm just really down is Disney World. I've talked about this before that, you know, the Magic Kingdom is my happy place. 
but lately due to some financial struggles it's actually been a bit of a nightmare so self-care for me sometimes is actually not going to disney because it's more harmful than helpful outside of that um for me i just love to you know this is actually the gaming pc that's running right now you can see with the the lights um i love to just jump in and really just blow shit up it's really cathartic um i've been playing halo infinite but i've barely progressed in the story because i just go run around do all the little side missions just so i can shoot grunts it's fun it makes me feel better especially when i'm angry so for me like just it's that cathartic release but that's a lot of you know releasing anger for the longest time building lego was self-care for me not so much anymore because that's my day job and so that i didn't realize that at the time when i started that you know the thing that brought me joy and helped relieve stress becoming my job and becoming a point of stress would really screw with my head i don't recommend turning your self-care into a job because no that's then you what happens when you need that self-care and the thing that's stressing you out is the thing that you use to relieve stress so but yeah what up until recently going to disney was is really my favorite it's just there's something really special about walking around a place that is just so deeply connected to my childhood um i don't feel like an adult there which is probably why i make a lot of bad choices financially there because i don't feel like an adult how was your experience doing the photo shoot the other day okay so we don't want to spill too much but because there's going to be a separate video that we did film um we're in the process we're just waiting to get the final pictures so on sunday uh, we're filming this on Tuesday, but on Sunday I did a boudoir photo shoot. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen previews of this photo shoot. Lindsay was taking behind the scenes photos as part of filming the B-roll and it was magical is, uh, is the short, the, the, the short of it. Um, having my makeup done professionally not that i don't know what i'm doing or that a lot of times Lindsay will do my makeup if we're gonna go to disney and stuff that that Lindsay isn't very good she's incredible and actually she learned a lot just from watching the professional i just felt so special i think a few episodes ago i was asked about my most euphoric moment mm -hmm. and I talked about my trip to San Francisco during my first transition. This photo shoot far surpassed that. I have never felt more feminine, more sexy, more like a woman than I did in that moment. And it's weird because it has nothing to do with being the object of sexual desire like that's not what that was about this was more because this is really just for me i'm sharing it with people so that they can you know hopefully be inspired but it's just one of those things that i somehow was able to like completely like i didn't recognize myself when i first looked in the mirror mm -hmm. i got home and I just kind of, and I think the photographer even got some shots of it because she was our, the photographer happened to be there like right as we got home from the makeup artist. And so like I had just changed and I, I hadn't looked, really looked in the mirror much other than taking a quick selfie. And I was standing in front of like the full length mirror and I was seeing myself and I did not recognize myself at first because I'm so used to seeing myself as this kind of like schlubby like kind of how i am now like like yeah i'm wearing a bra like but i i actually shaved before we filmed this but like i just kind of eh, like most days because like who am i trying to impress with this god it just it felt so wonderful and you don't need that sort of thing to feel that way if 
you feel this way just being your normal self in like ra random everyday clothes. But God, I felt so special. I can't recommend it enough. I really can't. And that brings us to the end of the prepared question. Oh, we're in the bonus round now. <laughs> last Lindsay, week. Lindsay did didn't do one do last week. A bonus question. So here we go. Where did your sign off, have courage and be kind come from? And what does it mean to you? <laughs> oh, this is a trap. It is not. This is a trap question. It's not a trap. Okay. So my sign off line, it has its roots in Cinderella. I re remember it from the live action film. I don't remember it being in the actual movie otherwise, but they've since kind of adapted it to make it seem like it was there. That's why it's like, my memory's fuzzy on that. But at the beginning of the movie, we actually get to see Cinderella's mother, which unlike the animated version, you don't see her. You see a little bit of the Cinderella's relationship with her mother. Her mother dies, but before she does, and I think she has like tuberculosis, so it's kind of historical at the time, she wants to impart some wisdom to her daughter. And she says, above all else, have courage and be kind. And that becomes kind of a defining moment in Cinderella's character, and it's something that she carries through for the rest of her life. It's why she treats the animals the way she does because she, she wants to be kind to everyone. As far as using it as a sign-off, and this is why I feel like it's a trap, mm -hmm. um, that straight up just comes from Harris Heller. He's a, a YouTuber, just rebranded his channel um, to Senpai Gaming, I believe, formerly Alpha Gaming. He's a big inspiration for me. He signs off all of his videos by saying, happy streaming, and he does this little motion. I try not to, like, do it exactly. <laughs> um, usually because, like, I'll be looking at, like, Lindsay knows if, I, if I'm not thinking about it, I will do it like this. Um, but that's why sometimes I'll point and just, you know, do the Disney point <laughs> and all of that. So it's, I wanted to sign off and just the have courage and be kind felt right. But where I've modified it is the especially to yourself. And that's because it's something I struggle with. I, I am my own worst critic. You, if you follow me on Twitter especially, you know that. I beat myself up more than anyone ever will. About my looks, about my actions, about what I say, everything. I am hypercritical of myself. I am the opposite of kind to myself most days. And so I say it as a reminder not just to you, the viewer, but to myself as well, because it's something I need to remind myself of. However, I do wanna add this little caveat at the end. I say be kind, I don't say be nice. There is a difference. Being nice means you care about someone's feelings. Being kind means you care about what someone needs. And sometimes those two don't mix. Sometimes what someone needs to hear doesn't feel nice because it's hard, but it's what they need. And what you're really doing is helping them in the long run, but they may not like you very much at the beginning. And that's okay because being kind is so much more important than being nice. Any Last any one. any other surprise? Oh, there's a sur a second bonus. <laughs> hey, you kind of already hinted mm -hmm. at this one when you were talking about uh, knowing when you were trans. Okay. But I had already written this question, so I'm going to ask it anyway. How did you come up with your names? Meaning not just this transition, but that first one that you keep mentioning. Okay. So where did my names come from? Okay, so I've already addressed where Alexis came from. That was kind of like my aha moment. But let's talk about the other names. I, I don't know how deep I want to get into this, but I had two different names that I was going by. 
the first, I, I'm not going to tell that story. Um, I'm going to be honest. It, it's, it's deeply embarrassing um, and kind of not very appropriate. So I'm not even going to say what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it started with a T. Anyway, for the longest time, though, dur basically the majority of my first, during my actual, like, once I decided to transition and everything, if I was going to have a different name, the name I was going with was Alita. And not Alita Battle Angel, like the anime or anything like that. Although that, because most of the time nobody knew how to say it, even when they saw it spelled out. But the movie helped with the pronunciation. It's actually based on a character from Marvel, uh, Alita O'Gorn. She's one of the original members of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And actually she's in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, played by Michelle Yeoh. She only shows up kind of at the end, during all the stuff with uh, Yandu's funeral. So that's kind of the basis for that, um, and a lot of that stems from the non-binariness of the character of Starhawk. In the original comics run, Starhawk is always seen as male, but there's this kind of weird thing that happens early on, where you find out that Starhawk almost has like a second personality living inside of him and when that personality takes over that person is all is depicted as alita and it's this very weird and i don't remember offhand exactly how it's explained that it's essentially two people in one body but it's not even just like a a did type situation it's it is straight up they're like two completely different people physically almost as well and Alita, for the longest time, didn't have the powers that Starhawk did. But then suddenly she did, and it's very confusing. Because it's comics, it was the late 60s, early 70s, it didn't make a lot of sense back then. A lot of drugs were happening, let's be real. So, later in, I believe it was the 90s, when the Guardians had their a second kind of resurgence, well before the movie, um, Alita was treated as a separate character. So... There's that. Um, she had a very different look but then. However, it's the early 70s material, specifically a scene where I, I watch, it's drawn out, where Starhawk transforms into Alita that just felt visceral to me and really spoke to my experience of going between my boy mode and my true self and that's seeing those panels just kind of helped me really process everything that I was going through and so it made sense as a name the problem was nobody knew how to say the damn thing it didn't feel right in my soul so when it came time to pick a name again because I'd abandoned my transition for a while it just felt right to pick a new name and I talked about that already on that note <laughs> That's all we have for this week. Um, a little bit shorter than the last couple episodes, I think. Yes. So, hopefully, y'all will appreciate this one. I didn't get as long-winded. But, uh, as a reminder, if you have questions for me for the next episode, please drop them in the comments below. It's very, very helpful for the channel. Helps spread the videos, helps get this information out to as many people, especially trans people, as we can. So we really appreciate that. And on that note, please consider liking this video if you enjoyed it. And if you really enjoy this series, please consider subscribing because that really helps us grow. It's the most important thing you can do to help us. So thank you in advance for that. So we'll see you on the next one. And of course, just like we talked about, as always, have courage and be kind, especially to yourself. One last thing, this entire video, I've been Disney bounding. Let, put a comment below to tell me what character I'm doing.